Yet Sunday in ordinary time, we have come to God's house to praise Him, to worship Him, to lift up our prayers, our petitions for ourselves and for others. Beloved friends in Christ, many times the Lord tests us, He tests our faith. But the many times we have failed in this regard, let us call to mind our sins, ask the Lord for his mercy and healing as we prepare for this sacred Eucharistic celebration. I confess to Almighty God and, and to you, my, my brothers and sisters, and sisters that, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my ways in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Thank you. 
for those who love you, good things which no eye can see. Fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Have a care for justice. Act with integrity. For soon my salvation will come and my integrity be manifest. Foreigners who have attached themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love his name and be his servants. All who observe the Sabbath, not profaning it, and cling to my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain. I will make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their holocaust and their sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar. For my house will be called a house of prayer for all the peoples. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let the peoples praise you, O oh God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the peoples praise you, O oh God. Let 
Let all the peoples praise you. Let the peoples praise you. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Let me tell you pagans this. I have been sent to the pagans as their apostle and I am proud of being sent. But the purpose of it is to make my own people envious of you and in this way save some of them since their rejection meant the reconciliation of the world. Do you know what their admission will mean? Nothing less than a resurrection from the dead. God never takes back his gifts or revokes his choice. Just as you change from being disobedient to God and now enjoy mercy because of their disobedience, so those who are disobedient now and only because of the mercy shown to you will also enjoy mercy eventually. God has imprisoned all men in their own disobedience only to show mercy to all mankind. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
listen to my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory be to Jesus left Gennesaret and withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. Then out came a Canaanite woman from that district and started shouting, Sir, son of David, take pity on me. My daughter is tormented by a devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples went and pleaded with him, Give her what she wants, they said, because she is shouting after us. He replied and said to them, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman had come up and was kneeling at his feet. Lord, she said, help me. He replied, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the house dogs. She retorted, ah, yes, sir, but even house dogs can eat the scraps that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, woman, you have great faith. Let your wish be granted. And from that moment, her daughter was well again. The Gospel of the Lord. By the words of this Gospel, may our sins be wiped away. Praise God. Hallelujah. Do you have a need? Do you pray for your need? How often do you pray for your need? I know that everyone has a need. And I equally believe that everyone prays for their needs. But what I don't know is how often we pray for others. That is, if we pray for others at all. And that is what we call intercession. Intercession, that is to intervene between two parties. To offer prayer to God on behalf of another person. That is intercession. Prayer of petition is what we do often. What we do on daily basis. God, give me this. God, give me that. God, I need this. God, I want this. But God, do this for her. God, do this for him. 
is what we often do not do. And so in today's gospel, this gospel passage challenges us to take up this task of intercession, praying for others, praying for the needs of others. In today's gospel from Matthew chapter 15, 21 to 28, we see a woman come to Jesus. She came not on account of her own needs, but on the account of the needs of her daughter. She came making intercession for her daughter, praying for the needs of another person. Do you have anyone that you ought to pray for? Will you pray for the person today? The challenge you have today. In fact, will you pray for the person now? When we come to Mass, we celebrate Mass, we celebrate Mass for the living and for the dead, for ourselves and for others. And so in this Mass, I want you to pray for somebody. Amen? Yeah, so pray for somebody. Learn from the woman of Canaan, the Syrophoenician woman. She came pleading, praying for her daughter. And this woman, when she was pleading for her daughter, Jesus did not say a word. What was he waiting for? Before now, the disciples of Jesus did not know how to make intercession. And so, as Jesus kept quiet, and this woman kept shouting, Master, have mercy on my daughter. Master, listen to me. The disciples then had to turn to Jesus and said, Master, give her what she wants. Give her what she wants. Why should you do that? So that she will stop crying after us. So that she will stop disturbing us. So the disciples learned how to make intercession. Jesus was quiet. He was silent because he wanted them to learn how to intercede, how to pray for others. And so once they joined in that prayer, Jesus began to speak. And so intercession is important. Praying for others. We can't always pray for ourselves. Just as you have needs, others equally have needs. And so when you pray for your own need, do well to pray for the needs of others. The daughter of this woman was helpless. She was tormented by a devil. So she couldn't come to Jesus. The first reading says that my house shall be called a house of prayer. She couldn't go to the house of prayer. She couldn't go to the house of God. She couldn't reach Jesus. But the mother went and talked to Jesus on her behalf. There are people that have needs, but nobody to pray for them. Nobody to make intercession for them. And so today's gospel challenges you, challenges me to make intercession for the needs of others. Will you do that? Not just about yourself. It is not about you. It's not only about your needs. It is equally about the needs of others. When you go to Mass and come back, do you tell somebody, I prayed for you today at Mass? Have we ever said it? Maybe you have never done it. That's why you never said it. And so today I'm telling you, after this Mass, call somebody on the phone and say, I prayed for you at Mass. Will you do that? And may God answer your prayer for that person in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And me, myself, I am praying for you. Are you there? You see how it goes now. We are praying for another person, and me, I'm praying for you. And our chief celebrant is praying for you. And our pastor is praying for you. Making what? Intercession for your needs. So you too, make intercession for another person. And so the second point in today's gospel. Why would this woman keep pestering Jesus when Jesus kept quiet? Jesus kept quiet. He didn't say a word to, he, to her. But she kept persistently asking him for mercy. And even when Jesus began to speak and say, it is not proper for me to, to give the food meant to the children and give it to a dog. The woman still persisted. Yes, even at that, dogs still eat scraps from their master's table. Why would she do that? Because she knew, because she believed that Jesus was capable of answering her request. Yes, what led her to that point of belief, of faith, that Jesus could do it? If you remember, I know you're a Christian, and I know you, 
you attended mass last Sunday and two Sundays ago. The readings from two Sundays ago showed us how Jesus multiplied loaves. People were hungry. He gave them food. Last Sunday, the gospel showed us that Jesus walked on the sea. He calmed the storm, meaning that nothing is impossible for him to do. He has power over nature. That was why he calmed storm and he walked on the sea. And so this woman believed that, yes, the man who did this could as well cast out demon. And so she came and said, my daughter is tormented by a devil. Help me, help her cast out this devil. And so that conviction was what kept her persistently asking Jesus for mercy. So are you convinced that Jesus has power to do everything? That Jesus can attend to every problem? Yes, he provided food for the hungry. And then the disciples were facing a great challenge, turbulent, and he calmed the storm. The storms of life are there. And so Jesus, who calmed that storm, can calm this present storm in your life. And this woman believed that, that this man who fed the hungry, this man who calmed the storm. In fact, after he calmed the storm, what happened? He crossed the sea and he landed at Gennesaret. Today's gospel began by Jesus left Gennesaret and withdrew to the region of Ty and Sidon. And so while he made that short stop at Gennesaret, what happened? People who heard that he fed the hungry and that he walked on the sea brought to him their sick relatives, intercession again, and he healed them. This woman got to hear about that. She believed that Jesus could do this, and so she came to Jesus pleading. And so, in your life, do you believe that Jesus can attend to every problem? Another thing we learn is that sometimes God is silent. He just keeps calm, as if nothing is happening, as if he's not listening. Jesus was hearing her request, but he was calm. He kept quiet. So when God seems to be silent, what do you do? Do you give up? No. This woman did not give up. She didn't give up. She continued. And then you now see the power of intercession. Because she did not give up, she continued. The disciples then joined in the intercession. That is why your prayer for another person is important. This person has been praying for herself, for himself. God needs you. God wants you to join in the intercession. As soon as the disciples joined in the intercession, Jesus was moved to now start speaking, to break that silence, that silence, and then he started acting. And he said to the woman, you have a great faith, and your faith has saved you. And then he said to her, let your wish be granted. Through your prayers, may Jesus say to somebody there, let your wish be granted. Through my prayers, through our prayers, may Jesus say to you, let your wish be granted. And through the prayers of the saints who constantly intercede for us, may Jesus say to us, let your wish be granted. Now I ask you, what is your wish? What is your desire? We are interceding for you. The saints are interceding for you. At this mass, we are praying for you. And may Jesus speak his words again and say, let your wish be granted. And may this be done for you for me, for all of us, for everyone that we make intercession for, now and always, through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes, Lord, I believe. 
Jesus Christ tore down the barrier separating Jews from Gentiles. As one people of one new and eternal covenant, let us pray to the God who unites us. universal mission of the church to all peoples. We pray, O oh Lord. For societies which discriminate against racial or religious minorities. We pray, O oh Lord. For artists, musicians, and scholars who preserve the heritage of ethnic cultures. We pray, O oh Lord. For the mass intention, thanksgivings, and other remembrances requested for this mass earlier mentioned and all other intentions placed in front of the altar. We pray, O oh Lord. For families who have migrated into our community from distant lands and for our private intentions, let us talk to the Lord in the silence of our hearts. We pray, O oh Lord. Blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, is a perfect example of a woman who intercedes. Let us unite our prayers with the prayers of the mother of God as we pray. Hail, Hail Holy Mary, Queen, mother of mercy. Hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To you do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To you do we send up our sights, mourning and weeping, in this veil of tears. Tend then, most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us, and after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruits of your womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Loving Father, you created us of one stock 
in your own image. Receive the prayers we offer in this house of prayers. Open for all people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. sisters and brothers that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice, sacrifice at your hands for, for the, the praise, praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good, good of all his holy church. church. Amen. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a, glo a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation Always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God Through Christ our Lord For out of compassion for the rewardness that is ours he humbled himself and was born of the virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and pass of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we are glad. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you gave life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command 
we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Jude Thaddeus, St. Dominic, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for failing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on it with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Alfred Adwale Martins, our bishop, the other of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, 
Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you are their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our saints, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not, not worthy that thou shouldst enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Prayer for an end to the coronavirus pandemic. O oh God, our help in ages past. We, your children, humbly implore your mercy at this time of adversity. We are devastated by the coronavirus pandemic that is ravaging the whole world, snuffing life out of your people and spreading fear everywhere. You are the God of life, and nothing is impossible to you. You ask us to call on you in the day of trouble, and you will answer us. We know that we are sinners who are unworthy of your favors. Although we have no merit of our own to plead before you, we stand on the merit of the death and resurrection of Christ and plead the saving blood over our lives and situation. We ask you to be merciful to us and save us from this scourge that is devastating the world. Be gracious to us and speak life and healing into the present coronavirus scourge and command it to depart from our world. Give leaders of government and scientists divine wisdom and knowledge 
to take the right decision and to discover the medication needed to cure people who are already, who are infected with this virus. Protect all health workers and volunteers. Look with pity on those who are already infected with this deadly virus and heal them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died from it and comfort those they have left behind to mourn their demise. Lord, through this scourge, may the hearts of many be turned back to you, their creator. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick. Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel. Pray for us. All angels and saints of God. Pray for us. May Our Lady, Mother of the Church, the health of the sick, intercede for the whole world. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please, let's be seated for the pastor's announcement. Glory to Jesus. Honor, Honor to, to Mary. Mary. Dearly beloved in Christ, indeed it feels good to be able to celebrate before a congregation. We thank God for this privilege of having our parishioners back. We thank God for their lives. We thank God for sparing, them, sparing their lives and keeping them alive despite the pandemic that has ravaged our world and our nation. It feels very good too to have parishioners who care so much and have also made efforts to see that we have the basics we need to continue our celebration of the Eucharist with the conditions we are meant to operate under. I wish to remind us, dearly beloved, that we will always comply with the protocols from the NCDC, the state government, and of course, the archdiocese. So we remind all of us to make sure we always come around with all the necessary things we need, our face masks, personal sanitizers when you do have them, and please comply. I wish at this point to please beg parishioners to bear with us. These are not normal or usual times, so we are going to be making extra demands of you in terms of compliance. Please and um, please, we ask that you persevere and you follow the regulations as recommended by the protocol team. We will not be seen not to comply. So please let us continue to try our best. On this note, we want to say that the registrations for mass will continue. Physical registrations during the week and online registration so that we don't exceed that ceiling. Please bear with us. I know it's going to make a little more extra demand of us, but please and please, this will be done weekly. Always log on to our website and you can register and you can also do this physically at the parish office. At this point in time, we want to thank all those who have contributed, individuals, societies, various items, from our nano spray guns to our sanitizers to disposable tissue, whatever you have contributed. Thank you very much, and we'll continue to work with you to see that we do not do anything contrary to the regulations. We want to also, at this point in time, join 
the entire body of Christians in the nation to express our pain, our grief. The Catholic Bishops' Conference have condemned the killings in Kaduna State, and we join in condemning this. God has created all men equal, and Christ, by his coming death and resurrection, has prepared for us the chance to receive eternal life. Life is sacred, and it should not be taken by other human beings. It is on this note that the Catholic Bishops' Conference has called that as Christians, we join in the intercession. We heard our homely speak about intercession. It is for us to intercede for our fellow Christians at this point in time. So the Catholic Bishops' Conference have declared a 40 days prayer beginning from the 22nd of August, and we enjoin all of us to partake of these prayers. Please check your bulletins for details. Please visit our parish website for details. But let us know that there is power in intercession, for the prayers of the righteous men avail it much. And together, we will pray for an end to this. So please, let us be part of that prayer. I will pray for the souls of the faithful departed, those whose lives have been taken in these barbaric and gruesome actions. We also pray for those who have been displaced. We pray that God will strengthen them at this point in time. This is our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. We once again thank all those who have been supporting us in various ways. I want in a very special way to thank the staff, the management and staff of Flora Aesthetica. They have made our church beautiful with the designs. Thank you very much. God bless you. And of course, our big collaborators, the management and staff of R2TV, we cannot thank you enough. Please always Join us on R2 TV channel 112 Go TV. So we continue to thank them for all they are doing. God bless you always. God bless the work of your hands. God prosper you. And let me add, Elisha and you need to know God will continue to guide and order your steps to the glory of his name that you continue to evangelize to all peoples. I thank my brothers. I thank members of the pastoral team, our chief celebrant and the homilist for today's mass and our liturgical team. Thank you very much. We wish to remind you that if you want any of the sacraments celebrated, please see the priest on duty or call the parish office for details, especially if it has to do with baptisms, weddings, or funerals. May God bless you, bless your families, bless the work of your hands. God bless St. Dominic's parish forevermore. Do have a beautiful week ahead through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we end today's Eucharistic celebration, it is important for us to always know that in our lives, God's silence does not mean his absence. May the Lord continue to strengthen us, grant us the grace of perseverance as we pray for ourselves and intercede for others through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. May he let his face shine upon you and show you his mercy. Amen. May he turn his countenance towards you and give you his peace. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. 
Go and announce the gospel of the Lord.